When analyzing the various species of Star Trek, it is interesting that a lot of them will have some form of rise and then decay. In Ronberry's Utopia, it seems that things not going to hell is a rarity. However, that would not be the case for the Bajorans who began their galactic affairs as an oppressed people to become one of the most stable and independent governments in the universe. The Bajoran people would hail from the planet of, wait for it, Bajor. It's crazy, I know. The civilization was extremely advanced compared to other Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers. At roughly 17,983 BCE, the Bajoran peoples had established the First Republic. We don't know a lot about this government, but it is hinted that it was indeed an actual republic and not just a naming convention. Additionally, there are indications that the Republic either had space travel or were already theorizing and constructing ships for space flight, like that of the Solar Sail. And it wasn't just that, the Bajorans were already making extensive gains in mathematics, the arts, science, and even philosophy. Vast cities existed during this time, including Bahala. At around 10,000 to 8,000 BCE, Wormholes whole alien sent out orbs that would become known as the Tears of the Prophets. These would be discovered above Bajor and completely contaminate the culture. A people that had focused on science and mathematics became deeply spiritual and started referring to the wormhole aliens as gods. An entire religious infrastructure formed within the society, giving excessive power to those within the religious ranks, all but forcing the society to become a theocracy. While we can't be sure if a caste system was created as a way to consolidate power by the religious figures, or if it had always existed, we can confirm that this system was something promoted and enforced by religious peoples of the time. Whether this complete civilization rewrite stunted the Bajoran growth or not, we can't be sure. But we do know that it would take them until the 16th century to develop sublight space travel to explore their own system, as well as solar cell technology to discover the Cardassian system. Well, not so much discover it as crash into Cardassia, probably already dead because they didn't have technology for warp travel, and the ship would have hit the atmosphere exploding in a fiery death, but still. Even though the sublight drive was finally realized in the 16th century, dialogue seems to indicate that for a further 700 years, the Bajorans would not discover warp drive and only ever stay at speeds that weren't faster than light. However, this wouldn't deter the Bajoran people as they continued to explore what little part of the galaxy that they could. All of this would come to an end when the Cardassian people would ultimately annex the system in what became known as the Occupation of Bajor. Starting in the early 24th century, Cardassians would strip mine Bajor, enforce slave labor, genocide the Bajoran people, and even use the women as their playthings. The occupation would last from 2328 to about 2369. During this time, the people of Bajor would attempt to flee their own system, finding sanctuary in outlying colonies and the Federation. However, Bajorans wouldn't just sit by as their people were taken advantage of. Uh, Bajoran resistance would rise up and fight back against Cardassian oppression. Due to this outright terrorism, as well as arguably Federation pressure, Cardassia pulls out of the Bajoran system in about 2369. Bajor would declare its independence, installing a provisional government to oversee the reformation of a Bajoran state. This provisional government, understanding that Bajor could not stand on its own, requested Federation support and allowed a Starfleet Joint Administration on Terak Nor, a previously owned Cardassian space station. The station would be renamed Deep Space Nine, a Starfleet naming convention that doesn't make a lot of sense unless you hold to the theory that the provisional government always wanted to be under the Federation banner and thus they were just making it easier for when Starfleet would come and provide protection. However, joining the Federation would not come without a lot of turmoil, as several Bajoran organizations felt that they had attained freedom from the Cardassians to only accept Federation rule. This would cause civil strife and near-civil war when the Circle, a group that wanted Bajor for Bajorans, was able to take over Deep Space Nine and had the near expulsion of all Starfleet elements. Though it would be stopped when the weapons for the organization were discovered to be supplied by the Cardassians. They had good ideas, it's just the Cardassians were giving them weapons, so you know how it goes. Ultimately, Bajor would be accepted into the Federation in 2373 and be about to sign when Benjamin Sisko, a Starfleet officer and considered to be the Bajoran Space Jesus, advised them not to do so. Because of this, Bajor would decline the invitation. Again, due to one religious leader saying no, one man who they thought was Jesus, they decided not to join the Federation. Something that impacted hundreds of thousands to millions of people. But with foresight, you can go ahead and tell me that this was the right decision because, you know, that's what commenters do. 
Anyway, Bajor would continue working in tandem with Starfleet until the Dominion Cold War. The Bajoran Provisional Government would sign a non-aggression pact with the Dominion, claiming neutrality in the fight. The Dominion agreed to the same structure and agreements Bajor had with Starfleet. As far as the galaxy was concerned, Bajor was staying out of it. Though, the worst kept secret was that Bajor supported the Federation Alliance during this war. Even with this out in the open, the Dominion did keep to its agreements and never caused any overt harm to Bajor. Though, this is in large part due to galactic policies and showing that they are a people of their word. The Bajoran system would shift between the Federation Alliance to the Dominion and then ultimately back to Federation control at different points of the war. At some point during this time, the Provisional Government would be replaced and Bajor would be known as the Bajoran Republic. And yes, I can read Memory Alpha as well. This is why they are a great resource, but not the end-all be-all of everything Star Trek. There is no evidence to support that Bajor was the Bajoran Republic the entire time, nor that they ever continued applying for Federation membership after the war. In fact, for those of you who don't subscribe to my death of the author, including many on that wiki, it is specifically stated by Iyer that they did not go after Federation citizenship. The government of Bajor was a shared venue between more secular elements and the leaders of the Bajoran religion. For instance, both the Kai and the Emissary could influence a vast amount of policies and peoples. Going back to what we discussed beforehand, the Circle heavily courted religious figures in order to cement their power. On the topic of religion, the Bajorans fashioned their entire existence around it. Specifically, they would worship the wormhole aliens known as the Prophets. The wormhole would be known as the Celestial Temple, and it was believed that when a Bajoran died, their paw went to be with the Prophets. Bajorans did reverse their naming conventions, having the surname before their given one. Additionally, Bajoran females would only carry a baby for five months and would have to be absolutely calm to have a child. If they did not have a baby at a certain time, they would die due to toxic endorphin levels. Okay. Being a religious people, it's no surprise that Bajorans would bury their dead with marked graves. There are several rituals around death, including the Bajoran death chant, lighting of the Duranja lamps, and more. As stated before, the Bajorans were well known for their arts, which included music. From everything I gather, Bajoran technology would stay stunted at the sublight level and would never advance to warp. Post-warp technologies would be gathered from the Cardassians and other powers around the universe. It's interesting to analyze the Bajorans. They started out as one of the more advanced civilizations, were ultimately stunted by the Cardassians, and arguably the wormhole aliens, to come out as one of the most important and largely independent governments. They would have the portal to the Gamma Quadrant, their independence, and a lot of influence within the Federation and other powers. If ever there was a government that rose in the ranks in the Trek universe, it would be the Bajorans.